Hello, um, just wanted to do a video about something. I normally don't do videos like this. I uh, don't know if I'll do another one, but this one got me so, this show got me so hyped that after watching tonight, I have to talk about it only because of all the uh, delicious treats that they have given us in this show. So um, if you're wondering what the hell I'm talking about, I am talking about Ash versus the Evil Dead. Now, let me tell you. Oh, happy Halloween, by the way. But yes, let's get to it. Okay, so just a little background. I am, among many things, because I have a lot of time on my hands, I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a big fan of a lot of things. Uh, specifically, uh, Back to the Future, mm, a lot of dumb 80s movies, and that would include, and I'm a big horror freak as well, that would include uh, the Evil Dead series, and me coming up, I was a huge Xena, and still am, I'm a huge Xena Warrior Princess fan, and Hercules. So, it would be natural for me to branch out of what these other people that were involved in Dina Warrior Princess did. So, at the time when I was about in high middle, middle school, not high school, middle school, when Zena was still a thing, uh, I started looking up what Robert Taper did, Sam Raimi, and I stumbled upon that they worked on some movies called The Evil Dead with Bruce Campbell, who played Autolycus, the King of Thieves in Xena Warrior Princess and Hercules. Now, um, if you're like, goddamn girl, you're a fucking geek. Yes, I'm a huge geek involving these people with this, uh, these projects that they're all kind of like tied into. So, Sam, and, I, and I've also read uh, Bruce Campbell's book, uh, Confessions of a B-Movie Actor, as well as Make, Make Love the Bruce Campbell Way. I will say that the first book is... I highly recommend that talks a lot of great detail about how he came up as an actor and how they worked behind the scenes on the first Evil Dead movies up and through, you know, Army of Darkness. It's a really cool book, so I really recommend that you read it. It's by Bruce Campbell. Um, okay, so we have the first one. I wrote some notes down because I, I wouldn't be able to control this in my brain because I am so excited for tonight's episode. This video will contain a lot of spoilers if not just a whole shitload of spoilers. So if you haven't seen it yet, stop the video right now. Okay, just stop. Okay, thanks. If you haven't turned it off, and if you haven't turned this off and you still haven't seen it, I'm about to uh, uh, fuck your shit up, uh, basically. I'm sorry, oh, excuse me, uh, bad language. Okay, so Evil Dead, the first one, was, came out in 1981, followed by Evil Dead 2 in 1987 followed by the last one army of darkness 1992 now if you ask me sarah what about the evil dead that just came out recently no 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 i don't even acknowledge that movie that's not no 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 i will not acknowledge it no way no it, it would no i'm just not even gonna go there so um yeah it was an amazing episode you know thank god it was uh you know made by Produced by, co-produced by Bruce Campbell, Sam Raimi, the man Sam Raimi, and the man Robert Tapert, which we also see in the beginning of the episode. There is a cameo by Lucy Lawless, who was Xena Warrior Princess, and she also played Rizzo one time in Grease Broadway show, but I won't get into that. That's just a little fact. And the cameo was amazing, and if you didn't know, Lucy Lawless is actually married to Robert Tapert. Um, I think they met, obviously, on the set of Xena Warrior Princess. They married in about 1998, and they're still married to this day, as far as I know. Also, I kind of looked ahead on internet, the Internet Movie Database, and Lucy Lawless is going to be making quite a few appearances. I thought it was, might be just for this one episode, but actually she comes out in about all ten episodes of the season. Not too sure how long her roles are, but she is in it. Another thing I want to point out when I looked through the Internet Movie Database, which actually got me even more excited because it's more familiar faces on the team. We have Michael Hurst. He is directing two of the episodes coming up. I don't know if it's the next one, but somewhere in the season, he's directing two episodes, one called 
Fire in the Hole and the other one called The Killer of Killers. And if you don't know who Michael Hurst is, he was Kevin Sorbo's Hercules sidekick, Eolus, on Hercules The Legendary Journeys. So that's another buddy from the old team coming in and that made me even more excited because I haven't seen anything with Michael Hurst in it since like yeah so um so yeah so Evil Dead kind of picks up 30, 30 years later in this new series you know uh, Ash is still kind of like this bumbling dude but he's like this cool old guy whatever he's kind of a kind of a douche He's still working at, uh, well, in this in this one, it's called Value Mart, but we really know what the hell it is. It's freaking S-Mart. It's just Value Mart now. Uh, he's still a stock boy with senor seniority, supposedly, because he can't get fired because he has seniority, but he's kind of a shitty employee anyways. So, you know, he's kind of douchey. Um, uh, one thing that kind of caught my eye, and I was like, oh, damn, was uh, there's a scene in the beginning, he goes to the bar, and he screws this woman in the bathroom, and like Bruce Campbell is like really getting down up in there, you know what I'm saying? Um, yeah, so he's pretty much banging this lady from behind in a bathroom. It's pretty crazy. Don't let your children watch it. This is, I would say, it's strictly uh, an adult movie, okay? Um, yeah, that was kind of surprising. I was like, damn. But it goes on, so he starts seeing all like the dead quickly possessing people and it kind of like messes with his head so it's going on and he can't really remember until one point in the show he remembers that he got high you know because he's an idiot he got high with some chick and they were talking about how much she loved poetry and just to impress her i guess maybe to you know woo her to lay or whatever he read he still had the necronomicon and he read a passage out of it and that awaken the dead and they found him so now throughout the episode he's he slowly realized that so it's happening in different places uh, the dead are coming back and they're possessing people you know pretty much the same stuff as you know the evil dead series as as how they the deadites possess the living so he in this in this episode though he usually you know he works alone but now he has two sidekicks it seems um, Pablo and, um, oh, I already forgot her name, but the other actress, his other sidekick is played by Dana DeLorenzo, and then his other sidekick is, uh, Pablo is played by Ray Santiago, who was on, uh, Meet the Fockers, he, he played, um, the Isabel, the old housekeeper's son, the one that could, like, fix anything, it's that guy, which is really cool because he, he it works, the, the sidekick stuff, it, it really works. And, um, I mean, this episode was just everything I could have hoped for and more. I mean, and I think it's only that way because it had the same, the old team back together working on this. It had the special effects that, I mean, we all come to love from the Evil Dead series, you know. Uh, it's not all CGI, it's like puppets and latex and, and just makeup special effects and things like that. Like old school tricks, you know, mixed in with new ones. It's just such a relief, you know. Um, what else can I say? And just the the campiness and the the wet, goopy horror and blood and gore that comes with the Evil Dead movies that we've grown to love. It it's all in there, and I I just cannot wait for the next episode. Like I am so excited. I literally just finished watching it like about. 15 minutes ago, I did my notes and I had to do this video because it was an amazing show. It brought back all that good old special effects, old school special effects and camp and gore of like B movies of the 80s that, uh, you know, people, movies of today, they just don't do it. They just rely too much heavily on special effects and they really don't use puppets anymore or the prosthetics mixed with this and that like it's just like too much of one thing and not a good balance of of, of the other in, in my opinion which is what they did here in this show and it's just as funny and and the possessions the deadites are just the same as they were you know of course a little bit better but the way they were in in the first second and, and third installment of of this series and it's 
it's just it's like so nice to see like an old friend um what else so you can look forward to a lot of Bruce Campbell ash isms as I call it you know groovy hail to the king gave me some sugar baby um I haven't he hasn't said it but I'm gonna wait he must say it at some point during the series I'm waiting for boomstick and uh, shop smart maybe he'll say shop value mart or so, I don't know something like that but it, it was a really good episode it, le it left us it left us hanging um, leading up to the next episode and this episode is called El Jefe and it, it goes into explanation about that Pablo the sidekick says after he kills something in the the stock room at, at his work um, he says that El Jefe is, is a person that his uncle who is like a, a shaman in you know central Mexico so that El Jefe is, is someone that it's gonna that's a chosen one chosen to he's the only one that can fight the dead and save the living from the dead you know so Bruce Campbell is, is that is that character so that's why the episodes the first one's called El Jefe so then we have towards the end of the episode they're fighting in his RV um, with the two sidekicks and then he he looks up and he sees the outline of his the infamous um, chainsaw you know that goes on his hand and he like kicks all kinds of ass with it in in the, the movies before so he does that he 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 sees it and then the deadite sees it and they're kind of fighting for it and he finally gets his arm in there you know a la Ash Bruce Campbell style just in the air it's flying and then it connects you know and then he just cuts this chick's head off and then they're kind of just sitting there and then he the sidekick Pablo asks him well how does it feel Hefe? and he's like groovy and you can kind of see in Bruce Campbell's face like it's so good to fucking say groovy again in this context so that last scene sets us up for what's coming up next on the rest of the season they had a trailer at the end of today's episode talking about next the next one so I'm just really excited about it. Um, I just want to talk about the cast and crew. That was probably the most important thing, um, to me at least. But thanks so much. Watch the show. Let me know what you thought. And like and subscribe. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.